For many decades ago, when I was at law school in Arkansas, our parish priest, Father Paulo, had a little parish retreat and they brought in these Dominican priests who were excellent preachers. They're, they're trained to be excellent preachers. And uh, one of them gave a homily about today's gospel, especially centering on the, on the verse, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And he told a story that I will share with you. It was about a couple planning to celebrate their 10th wedding anniversary, 10 years together. So they're still relatively young. And they live in a large city, and they wanted to go to the fanciest restaurant in town. I was on top, it was the top floor of a large building. Was, you know, and, and of course, in good weather, you could sit out on the balcony and you could look at all the lights of the city all the way around you. It's really, it was really quite nice. But it wasn't cheap, so they were putting their money away to go to this fancy restaurant. And you had to make your reservations way in advance because it was always booked. Only the, all the elite went there. All the famous actors in town would go there. All the personalities would go there. It was a who's who would attend this restaurant. And they wanted a chance to hobnob with these people or to be in the presence of all these famous people that they'd seen on TV and read about in the papers. So they, six months in advance, they called up and made their reservations. And as the day approached and it got really soon, the wife went and got, went, got her hair done at the salon, went and bought herself a new sh uh, dress, bought herself new shoes, and the husband went and changed his shirt which for a guy is pretty good, let's admit it. It's about the best most of us can do. And they went. They drove uh, to the fancy hotel. They decided to uh, have a valley parking go all out. They went to the elevator all the way to the top, came out, and there was the maitre d' standing there by the podium with the book. And they said, we're here, we have reservations, and we're here for dinner. What's your name, said the maitre d'. Told, they told him their name. Looks at the book. I'm sorry, but your name isn't here. Is it spelled some different way? And they spelled it out. No, I'm sorry, there's nothing even close like this to, the, to here. Well, they looked kind of amazed, and they said, well, we had planned this six months ago. Oh, he said, well, you know, we had a change of uh, staff about three months ago. It might have got lost in the shuffle. I'm very sorry. And they said, well, this is our wedding anniversary. We planned this. Is, can we get a table and a couple of chairs? I'm sorry, I can't. The restaurant's full. You'll have to leave. Well, there you go. Six months of planning, six months of preparation, and you think your name is written in the book, and it's not. And so they get down the elevator, and they get their car, valet, and, well, what do we do? You know, we have this whole evening planned. What do you want to do? And they said, well, you know, the options are pretty limited at this hour to get a reservation at a nice restaurant. But we are hungry. And the wife said, I certainly don't want to go home and cook. And the groom said, I don't want to cook either. So they decided to go back to the neighborhood where their old high school was and go to the old hamburger place that was a couple blocks from the high school that they used to eat at, where they met, actually, and went on their first couple of dates. So like if you're a friend of the Archie Comics, it had been their version of Pops, you know. So they drive to the old high hamburger dive, and of course it's open, and there's no valet parking, there's space in the parking lot. You go in, there's no maitre d', it just says, seat yourself. So they found a booth, and they went and sat down. And the waitress comes over to take their order. The, the, the menu's already there on there in plastic, you know, as it would be in a place like this. And they recognize the waitress. She used to be the waitress when they were there as teens. And surprisingly, the waitress remembered them too. And was delighted to hear that they had been married. And that was, they were celebrating their anniversary. And while the, the hamburgers came and the malts came, uh, they noticed another couple 
sitting across, angled, angled from them, and it turned out that those were two people that were in high school with them. So they took up a conversation with them, and that was nice. And then later on, one of their old teachers wandered in to get a carryout. So they waved their old teacher over and talked with her. And then just before they were leaving, they noticed something that was scratched onto the side. You know, they used to have those, put the quarters in, used to play music, you know. Well, they put someone scratched on the side of that, and it turned out it was their initials. Apparently back when they were high school sweethearts, they had drawn a big heart and put their initials on it. And they thought, they looked at each other, and they said, well, our name wasn't there amongst the important folks in town. But our name is still here, where we have friends still, and people who still remember us, and where we still have good memories. Jesus tells them, don't rejoice because the, spirit, the spirits are subject to you. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And I think that's very, very important. Because sometimes we'll get to thinking that, well, the rich and the powerful don't even know I exist. It doesn't matter. All that matters is staying faithful to the Lord because your name is written in heaven. And that's one reservation that will not be forgotten. Now, tomorrow is the 4th of July, and we're going to be celebrating the birth of our nation. And we live in a free nation where we can go where we want to go and say what we want to say and vote the way we want to vote and pray the way we want to pray. All of our freedoms. But as I've said from this pulpit many times, freedom has never been free. It isn't free now and never is going to be free. It depends on young men and women who take an oath to that Constitution, put on a uniform, and are willing, if need be, to make the ultimate sacrifice. In our church paper, every single week, we list the prisoners' relations that we know who are in all the varied military services. Some of these people used to work here. Some of these people used to be in our youth groups. So I'm asking you, sometime this fine 4th of July weekend, when you get, look at your church paper, take a couple minutes out and pray for some of these folks and give them some thoughts and prayers because without their service out there, and a place like they might have a really tough gig and they not might have much to celebrate tomorrow. You know, it might be in some cold, wet place where you wouldn't want to be, but they're out there so that all of us can enjoy our freedoms here. So please, for the 4th of July, between the firecrackers and the fireworks and the barbecues and the boat and the fun family fun, which is all wonderful, please say a few prayers for our, fam for our parish members who are in service. Thank you.